Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about yet another unusual phenomenon discovered in one of the distant white dwarfs known as T.W. Pictoris. A white dwarf located approximately 1400 light years away from us and that seems to be part of a binary system. It does have some sort of a partner. And specifically we're going to be discussing this study right here that has recently discovered something really unusual about this star system. The white dwarf in this case exhibits a phenomenon that has only been previously seen in different types of neutron stars. It seems to turn on and turn off, or essentially loses brightness and then return back to the original brightness extremely fast, in just a matter of minutes. And nothing like this has ever been seen coming from white dwarfs, only neutron stars. Which of course makes this particular white dwarf an extremely intriguing target for future studies. But what exactly is happening here, at least according to the scientists, and is there any way for us to explain this rationally? Well, the answer is yes, it seems to be a pretty easy explanation, it's just something that nobody really expected. So first of all, when it comes to these stars, or more specifically these binary star systems, they're normally known as cataclysmic variables. And we've discussed a lot of these types of stars and a lot of the extremes of these stars in one of the recent videos. This was also about different types of white dwarfs. But when it comes to cataclysmic variables, they actually do have a lot of different properties depending on what's happening on the surface of the white dwarf. For example, some of them, once they acquire enough mass, produce really large explosions we refer to as nova. Whereas other ones can actually explode completely, producing a type 1 supernova and also launching the partner star in a completely different direction. And then there are some other cataclysmic variables, sometimes referred to as the polars, which often exhibit extremely powerful magnetic fields, which then tend to produce a lot of other really unusual effects because of how these magnetic fields start to sort of control the matter around the white dwarf. But because thousands and thousands of these objects have already been discovered, for the most part scientists did not expect to find anything extremely unusual, and that's of course until a very recent study. A study that relied on the observations from the NASA's test telescope. So first of all, when it comes to these really bright white dwarfs at faraway distances, they usually only get this brightness because of the amount of matter absorbed from a partner star. In other words, they absolutely have to have a partner to produce a lot of these very bright emissions. But in every observation to date, all of these white dwarfs would only change their brightness maybe occasionally every few days. This is usually due to the interaction of the magnetic field with the accretion disk around the white dwarf. In other words, they generally stay relatively similar in brightness for a pretty long time. And the brighter the white dwarf, the more matter it probably is absorbing from its partner star. So some of the brightness CVs or cataclysmic variables are very likely just very very vigorous eaters. They're probably just making much larger accretion disks and are absorbing a lot more matter in the process. This matter, by the way, is simply just hydrogen and helium coming from the larger partner that it's sort of stealing the matter from. But for a typical white dwarf, this accretion process is believed to be more or less constant. And so this disk and the brightness of the disk generally produces relatively similar brightness for the period of at least a few days. It does change occasionally, but not by much. But the observations from T.W. Pictoris show a completely different story. The brightness here changes quite dramatically and also quite fast. And as I mentioned, something like this has only been seen around different neutron stars before. In case of a neutron star, they can change their total brightness once the magnetic field around the neutron star changes the composition and the amount of matter in the accretion disk. Normally this takes only a few seconds. And this brightness variation is usually referred to as mode switching. This concept in neutron stars is known pretty well and has been previously explained by various studies. But looks like for the first time, something similar has now been observed from this white dwarf as well. The mode switching here only takes approximately 30 minutes. In all of the other white dwarfs, this would take at least a few days. So how exactly does this work and what's happening here? Well, as I previously mentioned, some white dwarfs end up producing very very powerful magnetic fields around themselves. The magnetic field in this case ends up being so powerful that it also controls pretty much everything in the vicinity of the white dwarf, including the accretion disk. And it's also this magnetic field that's able to control the amount of matter that falls into the white dwarf. 
This process is known as magnetic gating, basically because it produces a kind of a magnetic gate. When the gate is open, the stuff falls in and the white dwarf absorbs the matter. When the gate is closed, nothing is allowed to come in. So when the gate is on, or during the normal feeding stage, the magnetic field of the white dwarf very likely spins relatively slowly and overall doesn't really interfere with the feeding process. But then something happens inside the white dwarf and the magnetic field changes quite suddenly, within only a few minutes. And what ends up happening is a very sudden acceleration of the spin of the magnetic field. And this sudden acceleration ends up creating so many centrifugal forces that they end up breaking apart some of the nearby accretion disk and thus turning off the accretion process on the surface of the white dwarf. In other words, the material sort of gets pushed away from the white dwarf for probably a few minutes, possibly a few hours, but then once the magnetic field sort of slows down once again, the accretion disk returns to its normal state and the white dwarf resumes its absorption and thus starts to be bright again. And at least at the moment, this reconfiguration of the magnetic field of the TW Victorious white dwarf is really difficult to explain. There's really no understanding of what actually causes any of this. But because something similar has been observed from neutron stars, there's maybe now a way for the scientists to try to explain and to possibly connect these phenomena in order to truly grasp exactly what happens inside these objects to cause these effects. And interestingly, all of the previous observations of the magnetic uh, gating, as it's known, have only been observed from millisecond pulsars, essentially neutron stars that usually spin extremely fast, with a single rotation only taking milliseconds. And so there's definitely a connection between what we're seeing in neutron stars or pulsars and what we seem to be observing from TW Pictoris, but obviously on much slower time frames. So once again, something that takes only seconds in a pulsar here takes approximately half an hour. But the other reason why this discovery is so intriguing is in regards to the accretion disks and various magnetic effects produced by other objects as well. Today, the more we study the universe and the more we study other bodies, such as, for example, planets and stars as they form, the more we realize the importance of magnetic interaction in the formation of these objects. For example, a lot of modern simulations and a lot of modern observations definitively suggest that very powerful magnetic fields close to baby stars directly control the growth of these stars. In other words, the stars normally accrete mass through chunks of mass following the very powerful magnetic lines. But at the same time, these same effects also produce powerful jets that end up releasing a lot of mass. So the total mass absorbed is directly related to various magnetic effects extremely close to the object such as a typical star. But then something extremely similar happens around planets as well. For example, planets like Jupiter and Saturn experience this, but on a much smaller scale, approximately four and a half billion years ago when they were growing in size. So these magnetic lines or protoplanetary disks or planetary disks actually play an extremely important role in regulating the amount of mass that's going to be absorbed by the final object. But trying to understand all of these effects and all of these interactions and what causes some of these stars to become bright and some of these stars to become dim, or what causes some planets to become massive and some planets to remain small, is still really a mystery. There are still so many unanswered questions. And so learning more about the magnetic effects when it comes to star interaction is actually still in its infancy and is still a very exciting field. Although I guess for now that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. So definitely a very exciting, very unusual white dwarf, but if you'd like to learn more about other unusual white dwarfs, check out one of the previous videos. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.